Hello everybody, Raven Knight here, and welcome to the very first episode of our brand new series, Executions Graded and For Honor. And for those of you who do not know what this is, essentially what I'll be doing is I'll be going through each hero's individual unique executions. I'm not looking at universal ones. Unique executions and giving them each a grade. Now, if you want to know why I'm doing this, long story short, I did the same thing in my For, For Honor analysis series. And while I did that and I liked it, I, I was not very objective. I was basically doing it based on my own personal opinion. I didn't really have a solid standard that I used for everybody. And I'd like to try again and redo that here and try to make a much better, more cohesive uh, grading system. So what I've done is I've created a full rubric and you can see that on the screen right now. If you want to hear how I'm doing this, like how I'm breaking down this rubric piece by piece, you can check out this video. Um, you can see the link in the upper right hand corner or you can find it in the description. You can check that out and it'll explain everything about how I'm grading. Um, but today we're going to be looking at Warden. We're going to be grading all the executions in terms of four criteria. How lethal is it? Is it realistic? Is it efficient? And is it cool? <laughs> like, and I, I admit, grading it on coolness is a little subjective on my part, but I felt like, you know, I had to add a little piece of myself in there somewhere. So, with that all out of the way, let's get started with Warden and their execution. Uh, I'm not going to be doing this in any specific order, it's just going to be as they come up. And at the very end, once I've graded all of the executions, I will give Warden an average. I will give them an average grade so we can see how Warden measures up as a whole. All right, let's do it. No, no wasting around. Let's get started. First one up is spinning decapitation. All right, this is a really cool execution. I've always really enjoyed this one. I've enjoyed it ever since I first saw it, and it's one of uh, Warden's first executions that you can get. Um, in terms of lethality, there's no question this is lethal. Anytime you have a decapitation like this, it's definitely going to be lethal. It's going to be deadly. So this is a four out of four for. Uh, lethality for realism well let's break down what the warden is doing the warden is striking the side of the neck with the sword spinning around the body the sword around and a cleaving arc that's meant to take off the head while i do think that that could be a realistic technique you might do unfortunately i don't think that this would take off the head that easily could it maybe but i have my doubts um for that reason it is a three out of four in terms of realism you got to realize guys that heads don't just slide off that easily we don't have masking tape holding our neck together. It's more like flex seal, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, point is, I, when you're taking off the head, two things matter, the sharpness of the blade and the strength at which you're doing it. And while the blade might be sharp in this case, the strength I don't think is evident. They're mostly just using the arcing nature of the sword to take it off, and I don't know that that could do it. It might, but I have my doubts. Now, as for efficiency, this is very efficient. When I look at efficiency, I'm looking at, okay, this is in the middle of a battlefield. You need to you need to show your show a skill. You need to show skill and training in your attack. You need to show that you know what you're doing, and you need to show that you can get this done quick. You can kill this guy and move on to the battlefield very quickly. And not only does Warden kill their opponent very quickly with this execution, notice how at the very end they go right back into a combat stance. They're already in a guard position, ready to go, ready to move on to the next enemy. So I think that's excellent. That is a great show of efficiency. That's a four out of four. For cool factor... I like it. I think it's neat. I, I really do enjoy this one. It just didn't wow me. It didn't blow my mind as much as others did. So I'm going to give this one a, a 3 out of 4. So that gives us a 14 out of 16 for spinning decapitation, which gives us our first score of an 88. Very cool. All right, moving on. Next up is Grave Passing. Very neat, very neat. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, start with the lethality. Is this going to kill? Based on the placement of the sword, it's going right into the center mass, right below the neck. Um, you're going to be... <laughs> this is instantly deadly, I would say. This is... I mean, even if you don't hit right into the... Even if you don't cut through any uh, carotid, you're cutting off the spine, most likely. This person's dead. This is an instant kill. I definitely think this is very well placed. I... I, I I can't stop. I can't stop talking about it. It's, oh, I love it. I love the setup, too. I know that I need to talk about that with realism, but just in terms of lethality, I'm talking about that this is definite kill. And you got it without having to decapitate, you know? I feel like For Honor gets too caught up in decapitation, so seeing this one where it's not a decapitation just makes me very happy. All right, so now, uh, for so that's a four out of four for lethality. What about realism? Well, what Warden is doing is I like the setup to the kill, 
especially. I like that they use the cross guard to strike the leg to knock them over. That's realistic. You would use the cross guard of a long sword in actual combat, particularly if you're fighting someone with armor. Um, and then after they fall over, immediately follow up by impaling them into the ground with the blade. I definitely like that. Um, so yeah, I could see this actually happening. I will give that a 4 out of 4 as well. So 4 out of 4 for realism. In terms of efficiency, yeah, that praying thing right there. Unfortunately, that's going to take off a point for efficiency. Um, again, if we're on the battlefield, you need to be moving quick. You need to move on. Because while you're taking this time to pray, your allies are under attack. Um, your enemies are coming after you to kill you while you're doing this. You really don't have time for this. So you need to be moving. I'm going to give that a 3 out of 4 for efficiency. And then for cool factor, again, it's neat. And I like the, and I think that it fits Warden's personality to do this. But it just didn't wow me. So this one's a 3 out of 4 for cool factor. So we get another 14 out of 16 for a total score of 88. Moving up. Next up is Brutality of Tom Lang. Excellent. Okay. So, first of all, let's talk about the realism because we don't know that this is actually lethal just yet. I want to talk about how this is done. I want to break down the execution first. So, we start off with a slash across the belly and notice the way that the warden holds the sword. She has one hand on the blade, one hand on the hilt. So she's using that to help control the movement of the sword, much more controlled. She slashes across the belly, and then slashes up, and then stabs up into the midsection, pulls out, and then strikes with the cross guard against the face, knocking them into the ground. Once they fall on the ground, she then brings the cross guard down and strikes into the side of the face, which would probably go into the skull and hit some gray matter. So that is an excellent technique it's very realistic i like the way it moves it's very fluid already i can tell you right off the bat that this is going to get a four out of four for realism and for efficiency because with the efficiency this is fast this is fluid it shows true skill and she doesn't waste time after she hits the head she picks up the sword very quickly and then moves on you know we're done we're, we're getting on to the fight so definitely for efficiency and realism both get a four out of four now is it deadly Actually, yes. Even if we leave out the um, strike to the belly, which I think both strikes would be enough to kill, maybe not instantaneously, but they would kill, that final strike to the head, no, you're dead. As soon as you get gray matter, you might as well consider yourself dead. You're done. So that's a four out of four for lethality. And then for cool factor, I ain't gonna lie, I love this one. It wowed me when I first saw it. It's very, it's very cool to watch. I think it shows Warden at her absolute best. So I'm definitely giving this one a 4 out of 4 for cool factor. So we get our first 100. 16 out of 16. I love this execution. This one's an awesome one. So great on you, Warden. Great on you. Next up, Knockout. All right, really neat. I like this one a lot. Again, this is a really cool one for me. Okay, so in terms of lethality, we have a decapitation again. So four out of four for lethality, pretty easy. But now for technique, it's a little interesting. So what happens to start off with is the enemy attacks and she blocks by um, catching his forearm with the blade. Then brings it around, stabs up into the midsection, rolls them off, and then takes off the head once they get into a kneeling position. It's going to lose a point for realism for me, and I'll tell you why. Watch very carefully when she takes off the head. It flies up. It bounces. It shoots upward. That wouldn't happen with this kind of decapitation. The, the head. There's no pressure underneath the head keeping like keeping tension up that would knock it into the air. It should just roll off. So that's a little unbelievable. Plus, she got him off. It's a little unbelievable that she could just make this guy roll. And he'd just instantly roll onto his knees for that easy setup. I think that's a little unrealistic, too. So this gets a 3 out of 4 in terms of realism. Now for efficiency. Mm, I think it's efficient enough. She gets through it very quickly. It does show skill. And as soon as she's done taking off the head, she's moving on to the battle again. So I'll definitely give this one a 4 out of 4 for efficiency. 
And as for the cool factor, I can't help it, guys. I love this one. It's so good. It's actually probably my favorite Warden execution overall. So I'm definitely giving this one a 4 out of 4 for cool. So this one is our first 15 out of 16, which gives us a score of 94. So far, Warden, you're doing pretty good. I actually like most of these executions that we've seen so far. Let's see if she can hold it up. Next up, Manas Monum Sakat. Ooh, okay. So, um, this one's a little funny. When I first graded this one, I thought that she was just cutting the hands, but people have pointed out that that's not what she's doing. She's actually sliding her sword and impaling through the um, forearms, both of them. And I can kind of see that now, but believe it or not, that's actually going to hurt it, but we'll get to that. So, first of all, a decapitation, four out of four lethality. But now let's talk about the realism of this. Here's the thing. Um, the fact that she could slide that sword through not just one, but both forearms in one push-through? No, that's a little too unbelievable for me. And I'll explain why. Um, if you have a remote control or a, or a ruler of some kind of object next to you, push it on your arm like, like the warden is doing with her sword. And what do you notice your arm immediately start doing? It's being pushed away, right? Your arm's slowly starting to be pushed away. That's because even if it's a blade... Your arm is going to want to move with the object pushing against it. So if she could go through the first arm, okay, fine, I'll buy that. But then the second arm, you'd think that going through the first arm would stop some of the momentum of the sword. It should not have slid through like that. Like That's why I got confused, because there's no resistance as she slides it through the arms. And I feel like there should have been some kind of resistance if she's going to do that. So that loses a point in terms of realism for me. Although I will say happily that the decapitation is more realistic here she has a good wind up for the decapitation and um it doesn't pop off it just rolls off which is exactly what i wanted to see so one point off for realism but a good decapitation for once now for efficiency mm, i can't say that this is efficient either and i'll tell you why even though we get that um, little struggle, she then takes a moment to pause before taking off his head. I don't like that setup. I feel like as soon as she gets into position, she should go ahead and strike off his head. Why does she wait a minute for him to look up at her? She should just immediately take off the head and then move on. That's the way I look at that. So one point off for efficiency. And then the cool factor. <clears throat> this is a neat execution, definitely. Fits her personality. Just didn't wow me. Just It's kind of like... Eh, it's it's it's, it's kind of it's neat but it didn't blow my mind so a three out of four for coolness all right so that gives us a score of 13 out of 16 which gives us an 81 very cool warden i like this one next up is deep hacking nice okay so Let's start by talking about the lethality. Is it lethal? Well, it's a decapitation, so you tell me. Yes, that's a that's a four out of four for lethality. I love it. Now, for realism, let's break down the movement. Strike into the middle. Follow up with a strike into the neck and shoulder. Walk across, slit the throat with the blade, and then decapitate. Yeah, I could buy this. I like the windup she has to do for each blow. It shows that she's having to put a lot of power into it. I like the um, movement of her legs. Like, if you watch her hips and her legs, she is very careful in how she moves to b to build up those wind-ups. I really like that. And notice even on her le on her foot when she has to bring up her foot a little bit to um, build up that power. I really like that. Yeah, this one gets four out of four for realism. Just beautifully done. It, for efficiency... I actually want to give this a four out of four, even though that um, even though you might say, "Well, wait, Raven, didn't she take a minute to slit the throat?" I think that that's okay because she's being careful to make sure that she gets the job done. Because none of the initial blows might be deadly on their own. I think that the first two blows are could kill. They could kill in time, but by slitting the throat, she makes sure that the job is done and done well, and then finishes up. And then right after that, she's back into the fight. She's good to go. So four out of four for efficiency. And then for coolness, okay, again, I love this one. It is so fun to watch. It is so cool to witness. And I think it's one of Warden's best. So four out of four for cool. Yeah, this is another 100. 16 out of 16, guys. I love this execution. 
Very, very cool. All right, moving on. Alarius's Wrath. All right, so it's one of the ones that I see the most where the Warden just punches out the enemy. All right, so let's talk about this one. First of all, for lethality. This is the first one that I cannot give a four out of four. Here's the thing. As someone who has been in boxing matches and MMA matches and Muay Thai matches and been in real fights before, I've been punched multiple times in the face. I cannot, I'm, I'm still alive, you know, so um, I, I cannot say that this one is obviously lethal. Now, could you die from being overly punched in the face? Yes, you could, but it's not a guarantee and I have to take off points because I can't say for certain that this is a guarantee. So I'm going to give this one a 2 out of 4 in terms of lethality because I just don't think that would be enough to kill. Now some people, I know that I'm going to get this, some people are going to argue, oh, well, Raven, they're already dying. They're already dying, so you can't say that it's not lethal because they're going to die anyway. This is just cherry, a cherry on top. Watch my video in the description so that you can hear my thoughts on that, but essentially um, that doesn't matter to me. The execution is meant to kill, therefore if it's not a kill blow, it loses points. Now for realism, is this realistic? Yeah, yeah this is realistic, I could see this happening, punching someone out out of frustration for sure, 4 out of 4 for that. Efficiency? Uh, I gotta give this a 1 out of 4 for efficiency. It's fast, but... It doesn't show any real skill. And plus, look what she does. She throws her sword down. If you want to get a bad grade from me in terms of efficiency, drop your weapon. Okay, that's a terrible decision, and I'll tell you why. Let's say that in the middle of punching this guy, an enemy runs at her and knocks her off. Well, now you don't have a weapon. You don't have your sword anymore, honey. You're dead. You, you threw aside your weapon. You had a perfectly good weapon to kill this guy with, and you toss it aside just to punch him a few times. Not a good move, so efficiency gets a 1. And then for the cool factor. Well, I will say this. While I don't think this is as deadly as it needs to be, and I don't think it showed any true skill, I will say it's very satisfying to just punch someone repeatedly in the face when they frustrated you. So this gets a 3 out of 4 for coolness for me, just because it is satisfying. Alright, so that gives us a stinking 10 out of 16, which gives us a 63 for this execution. Next, taking out the trash. This one's a pretty quick one. Is it lethal? Well, it can be. The placement of the blade going in is in the lower midsection, which, yeah, you'd probably bleed out. You'd probably die, and it would probably be... I don't think you would get that treated quick enough. I don't think there's any way to survive that, but... It would take time. I have a feeling that it will take some time to bleed out. This is a painful way to go out. He would probably be suffering for a good five or ten minutes before he finally bled out. So I can't say that that's immediately lethal. So that's a three out of four for that lethality. Uh, for realism, yeah, four out of four for this one. I can definitely see you just impaling someone through the gut. Yeah, I, I would say that's very much realistic. Just shoving that sword up into the body and they're done. Yeah, perfectly done. Move on. Um, and then you have efficiency. Is this efficient? Well, certainly, yes. It's a 4 out of 4 for efficiency because she gets that kill and she's done. She's ready to move on to the next fight. In fact, she goes into her guard stance. She's ready to go. She's done. Move on. Let's go. So, definitely efficient there. And then for the coolness factor, ah, 3 out of 4. This one's a 3 out of 4 for me. I just... Uh, I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it's good, but it didn't wow me. It didn't blow my mind or anything. So I got to go with 3 out of 4 for this one. So that gives us an overall score of taking out the trash, getting 14 out of 16, which is an 88. A moment of silence. Okay, this one reminds me a little bit of... Um, the grave passing execution showing some respect and i like that you know you know warden that fits warden's character a respectful person but um that's going to lose points for efficiency because again you're taking time out of the fight to show this respect um and in a battlefield scenario you can't afford to do that now i already hear the complaints coming in it could be a duel raven what if they're in a duel we're not talking about duels we're talking about war we're talking about open warfare 
And I have to consider that in this execution. And in this execution, you're taking too much time to say a little prayer and show some silence to your buddy, you know, that I'm sorry, you, that's not a good idea. So efficiency, this gets a two out of four for me. Two out of four, not a good idea. Now for lethality, is this lethal? Again, it can be. This is going into the midsection. They're probably going to die. Oh, I mean, look at him. He's still moving a little bit, so he's not dead yet. It's going to take a little bit for him to die. It's not immediately lethal. And you want to make sure that it's immediately lethal. You want this person done and dead by the time you're done, you know? So I, I definitely would say this is uh, three out of four for lethality. Now, for cool factor, again, this is very fitting for Warden, and I do think it's cool. I like this one. It's very neat. So I'll give this one a 4 out of 4 for Cool Factor because I think it fits Warden way too well not to get that. Very respectful, honorable, which is, hey, it's for honor. <laughs> and so I'll give that a 4 out of 4. And, uh, yeah, for realism, yeah, I'd say this is realistic. I mean, I wouldn't do the prayer, but I think it's realistic in how they do it and how they execute. So I'll give that a 4 out of 4 as well. So we've got a three for lethality, a two for efficiency, a four for cool factor, and a four for realism, which gives us a score of 13 out of 16, which is an 81. Next up is guts, then chop. All right, so guts, then chop. So they've got the sword embedded in the enemy. They draw it out through the shoulder and then spin and take off the head. Well, we've got a decapitation, so instantly lethal. Got to go with that. Realistically, I've got to go with a three out of four. Because, and it's all about the buildup. Wait for this. Notice how she pulled the sword out of the shoulder. Keep in mind, you're pulling the sword through rib cage, muscle, and a shoulder bone. It should not come out like that. Yes, I know it shows resistance, but... I feel like instead of just coming clean out through the shoulder, it should have slid out or she could have pulled it out and then cut off the head. But no, she goes straight up through the rib cage and through the shoulder blade and they're, I, you shouldn't have done that that easily. So a little unrealistic there. So that gets a, th so that gets a three out of four. Efficiency, four out of four. She kills him. He's done. She's in a guard position. She's ready to move on. So very efficient. Great show of skill. Great show of force. She's moving on. She's ready to go. Cool factor, three out of four. It's neat. It's kind of cool. It's nothing amazing. So sorry about that. It's just, it's, it's a neat execution, but not, not one that blows my mind. All right. So that gets a 14 out of 16, which is an 88. Next up is shoulder tackle. Okay, so let's start with lethality. Would this kill? The sword is going straight into the midsection where the intestines are. This would not kill straight away. This would um, probably lead to a long, slow, agonizing death. You will probably be in a lot of pain for a good maybe 10, 25 minutes. You would bleed out. It would be very ugly. You will die, but it will take time. So this gets a 3 out of 10. This gets a 3 out of 4 for me. Sorry about that. Three out of four. Um, for realism, you got this running tackle into the person. They don't get up. You kind of shove the sword into their chest and then pull yourself up after saying, oh, wait, hold on. I'll get this out. <laughs> it's it's definitely funny, but is it realistic? I don't know. I feel like it's too much of a setup. I feel like the opponent might try to get up or wrestle with you. I feel like... Um, you, I feel like instead of shoulder tackling, you might just run at them and impale them with a sword, you know? Why try to knock them over and then get up while impaling them? So, realism gets a 3 out of 4 for me on this one. It seems a little set up, but don't get me wrong, it's funny. And that goes into the cool factor. I think that it's a funny execution. It's creative. It made me laugh when I saw it. So, that gets a uh, 4 out of 4 for cool. For efficiency, no, this is a 2 out of 4 for efficiency. The shoulder tackle was very sloppy. I mean, you'll notice that she doesn't even hit with the shoulder. She hits with the arm or elbow. And then it's kind of clumsily done. I'm kind of like, eh, it didn't, it didn't feel like there was a lot of skill there. Took a lot of time. And while you're laying down like that, you are exposed to the enemy. So, yeah, that's going to be a, uh, <laughs> that's going to be a, a two out of four for efficiency. So, that is a 12 out of 16, which is 75. 75 for this execution. 
Next up is the Blackstone Bash. All right, there's a lot to say about this one, so let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about the lethality. Could this kill? It might kill. Look at the placement of the sword. It's not really even hitting the midsection. It's hitting the hip. Can we look at that from another perspective? It's not very conclusive. It looks to me like it's just hitting along the hip and underbelly. And again, this isn't even a stab. This is a slash. We have no way of knowing that that's going deep enough to cause lasting damage. She then strikes the, um, the thigh or ankle and then that knocks him into the air and then she shoulder bashes them. And I can't guarantee that would kill. So I'm afraid this one for lethality gets a two out of four. Now, for realism, maybe it's better in the realistic category. Unfortunately, no, because look at this. She knocks him into the air with that swing. How did you get them in the air with that? How did how did knocking out their ankle send them parallel to the ground? I mean, that's not even a matter of strength. They must have jumped to help you with that. I don't even understand how you made that work. So, for realism, that's a two out of four. That, that required some supernatural aid right there. Now, now efficiency, maybe it's more efficient. Yes, I would say this is efficient. Very fast. It's, it, move, it goes very quickly. You get the strike in, you knock them over, you're done, move on, you're done. So very, very much a four out of four in terms of efficiency. And is it cool? Yes, this is a warden execution that I adore. I, I know that I got on it for lethality. I know I got on it for realism, but I can't help it. I love the Blackstone Bash. It's such a fun execution. It's fast. It looks badass. It incorporates a shoulder shove in a neat way. Oh, it's good. So a four out of four for coolness there. I like that one. Um, so this one is a 10 out of 16. Yeah, I know after just gushing on it there is a 10 out of 16 with a score of 63. Next up is Hilt Strike. All right. So for lethality here. Yeah, this is lethal. This is a four out of four. Notice where the um, cross guard enters. That's entering the carotid. This person has just had their one of the most vital veins punctured. They're done. They're finished. You're not going to fix that. You're dead. <laughs> You're a dead man. And even if it didn't raise right the carotid, it might have broken through the vertebra, which would have been deadly. Um, so I definitely think that this one's a deadly execution. So definitely four out of four for lethality. Is it realistic? Actually, yes. This is what you would call ending them rightly, striking with the cross guard. Because you got to recognize that when you're fighting an armored opponent, sometimes the blade isn't going to be enough. So you use the cross guard to pummel your opponent, and this would be a way to do it. So this is a realistic execution, four out of four. Is it efficient? Also, yes, four out of four, because it's fast. You get it done, you go right back into the guard position, you're ready to move on. You, you, you're back in your guard position, you're ready to go right back into the fight. And it shows skill. It shows a lot of strength and skill to be able to pull off a move like that. Is it cool? Uh, not really. Compared to what we uh, compared to what we've seen earlier, it's it's neat. It's it's kind of it's kind of cool to see, but not anything that's gonna blow my mind. So I'm gonna give this one a two out of four for coolness. So what does that give us? That gives us a 14 out of 16, which is an 88. Not a bad one. Definitely wins in in three out of the four categories. Next up is the backhand strike. Alright, so the backhand strike. Is it lethal? It, there's a good likelihood it will be, but I can't guarantee it. Striking against the chin with the cross guard is probably a good idea. It might just kill. The problem is, I've been backhanded before. In fact, I've actually been struck across the face by a pipe. And I'm still alive to talk about it. Although, I guess my jaw's a little sore. Um, but I, I can't say for certain that this would kill. Um, it, there's a good chance it would, but I can't say for certain. So this gets a three out of four for lethality. For realism, again, this is a four out of four. You're using the cross guard as a striking weapon, which is good. That's realistic. You definitely want to do that. So four out of four for that. Is it efficient? Again, yes, four out of four. 
you're striking, you're getting your kill in, you're moving on with your damn day. So, And you're already in a, a protective stance, you're in a guard position, so that's already a good start. So I definitely think that this is a, um efficient execution. Is it cool? It's... It's kind of on the same vein as the last one, uh, the Hilt Strike. It, it's just... It's neat, but it's nothing incredible. So I got to go with a 2 out of 4 for Cool Factor. So that gives us a 13 out of 16, which is 81. Next up is Larry's Banner. Uh, okay. All right. So is it lethal? Yes, this is lethal. An impalement execution. It sends the uh, pole right through the center area, puncturing the heart. This would kill. No question. So that's a four out of four for lethality. Is it realistic? Well, if Bugs Bunny is realistic, <laughs> you're, you're, you're pulling a giant banner out of your ass. That's literally what it is. You're pulling a giant banner out of your butt and then shoving it into a dude. I mean, come on. I know it's a feat execution, but it's so goofy. It's non-realistic. This is a one out of four for realism. It's, oh, that annoys me so much. Is it efficient? No, this is a terribly inefficient execution. No show of skill. You put your sword down and you killed the dude with a banner when you could have killed with your sword. Now, some of you might be thinking, now, Raven, hold on. Before she struck with the banner, she struck him in the gut with her sword. Wouldn't that be deadly too? It could be, but the placement isn't anywhere meaningful. I mean, I guess you might be hitting the liver. Seems a little low for the liver, though. I mean... There's no way of knowing if that would be deadly, but that's not the point. The banner is supposed to be the big killing thing here, and I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. All right, and then the cool factor. I personally don't like this one very much. I, I think it's hilarious. I think it is funny, but I have to give it a two out of four. I, I don't think it's that unique. I think it's... Uh, it's it's just very contrived. I don't like that one. So this one gets an 8 out of 16, which is a 50. The first failing grade of the executions. Uh, sorry, Warden. I don't like this one. Next up is Fractured Ribcage. Oh, that's so brutal. All right, so, would this kill? Yes, yes, this would kill. Drawing the sword through that, you're hitting every vital organ you have to. You're destroying the liver. You're cutting open a lung. You're probably gonna go through the heart too, since it's in the midsection. You've broken the ribs. You've broken the shoulder blade. Everything is destroyed. This is a four out of four execution. The doctor could be standing right next to him. You're not saving this guy. This dude is done. Um, is it realistic? Actually, I would say yes, because oh, notice something different about this kill. Remember earlier when I was talking about guts then chop, when I said that they went through the rib cage and shoulder blade too easily? Watch the resistance here. She strikes the head, strikes the thigh, puts the sword in, and then has to struggle to pull it out. See, that to me shows that they're struggling. They're having a harder time getting that blade out. And, oh, it's just so mean. It's, ah. Oh. Oh, that hurts just looking at... Now, is it efficient? Unfortunately, it takes a little too long to pull it out of the rib cage when all you had to do was pull it straight out the way you pulled it in. So, it loses a little bit for efficiency, but it still does what it needs to do. So, it's a 3 out of 4 for efficiency. Now, is it cool? I don't want to say cool. I want to say horrifying. Oh, that sends shivers down my spine. But that leaves an impact that leaves that leaves something with me so i'm gonna give that a four out of four for cool and so that gives us a 15 out of 16 a 94 very good warden just oh wow next up is end them rightly all right okay let's answer the obvious question is this lethal 
No. This is not lethal. Now you might say, no, hold on, Raven. They put the cross guard into the eye. Wouldn't that kill? Not necessarily. The eye isn't a vital organ. And I don't know that it went deep enough in to hit the brain. In fact, look at him. He's still wandering away, clutching his eye. He might have survived that. So, no, I don't see that as lethal. I don't think that would necessarily be lethal. I mean, people lose their eyes sometimes and they just replace it with an eye patch or a glass eye. You know, like, I, I don't necessarily think this is lethal. So, sorry. I, I, that's a one out of four for lethality. For realism, striking the eye is... A, it could work. It could definitely incapacitate and open them up for a follow-up. But I don't know why she doesn't just strike him from behind here. Instead, she just throws her pommel at him. Which I think is dumb. I don't care if it's a realism execution. It's dumb. But because there is some realism involved, I'll give it a 3 out of 4 for realism. Because, I mean, you could definitely do that with the cross guard of the sword. Is it efficient? Not really. I give it a 2 out of 4 for efficiency. Because after you struck the eye, you should have moved in and killed him there and got on with it. Instead, you take the time to take off your pommel, throw your pommel at his head, and then put on a new pommel. I don't understand why you did that. It's a waste of time. So, bad move. And then cool factor. I know there are people who find this one funny. I find it stupid. But, uh, Lark and I talked about it and we agreed to give it a 2 out of 4 for coolness. Because, I guess it's somewhat creative. <laughs> so, 2 out of 4 for coolness. But that still gives us an 8 out of 16. Which is a 50. Sorry, but I'm not a fan of this one either. And that is all of the Warden Executions. So, taking all of those scores, adding them up, and then dividing by 17, because there were a total of 17 executions that we just looked at, that gives us a total score, if we round up, to 81. Warden's average score for executions is an 81. I was surprised, too, because, to be perfectly honest, I like a lot of Warden's executions. I think Warden is a very cool character with a lot of charisma, a lot of honor backing them up. I think that, I think that they're probably my favorite hero in For Honor, even though they're not the best hero in For Honor. And I liked a majority of their executions, giving them pretty high marks, but there were some that were just so bad or not on par that I had to say, eh, it just didn't work out the way I thought it should. But you know what, guys? I still love this. This was a lot of fun to look at. I had a ball talking about this. So I hope y'all enjoyed this first episode of the new series on grading executions. What did y'all think of the grading system? Do y'all think that it was uh, accurate? Do you think it was fair? Do you think I was being as objective as possible? If you think I could improve, let me know in the comments. If you liked what you saw, again, let me know in the comments. Leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Take care.